If you notice when you watch TV, whether you stream on Hulu or some other app, um, you notice that all of these big brands have suddenly shifted. They're not doing their traditional, typical messaging. This is TYC Three Yellow Chairs with Spanky Moskowitz. How do we, as creative agency owners now, in, a, in a, what seems like a whole new market and like the whole universe has turned upside down, how do we yeah. make sure that the market confirms our talent and that we still have it and that we're still connecting and getting sales and helping people out? I, I think there's a huge disconnect and I'm seeing it right now. I, I've been focusing a lot of attention on traditional old school media the last few weeks because I, I've been watching this pivot of big brands. If you notice when you watch TV, whether you stream on Hulu or some other app, um, you notice that all of these big brands have suddenly shifted. They're not doing their traditional, typical messaging, right? You're not seeing like USAA is still selling insurance, but what they're selling is the emotion, the feeling of, hey, we're in this with you, right? We are wow. stuck at home and it's all selfie videos of their employees talking about stuff. Mm -hmm. McDonald's is doing ads that talk about being together, but being apart, right? Everyone's doing this. But then when you go online in the digital space where most of us spend 80% of our day, Mm -hmm. Not every business is pivoting like that. And they're just going about business as usual, which makes them feel really out of touch. This, this conversation stems from um, a group call we had with the team at VaynerMedia um, two weeks ago. And so I was on with Nick Dio and several from the Vayner team. We had about 40 people on the Zoom. That's Gary and Vee's group, right? Gary Vaynerchuk. That's Gary, yeah, that's Gary Vee's company, his, his, yep. his big agency. Mm -hmm. um, and then... So we were talking about messaging. And for me, I can still close sales. I can still bring people into my business, but, but shifting my message so that I feel relevant and I feel current and I feel like we're not just blind to what's going on around us. And I feel like a lot of online businesses haven't done that because there's this mentality of top of funnel, middle funnel, close the deal. Top of funnel, middle funnel, close the deal yeah. versus creating an emotional touch point, right? People do business with businesses they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. But if your business feels so out of touch with what's going on, you're going to start to lose your relevancy. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I wish I could record that and, and have that to use again, because I, I just realized when those words came out of my mouth, I've been trying to articulate this for yeah. weeks to business owners. Yep. You, you lose your relevancy to the audience that's, that's, that you want to do business with. And, mm. and by the way, you don't have to, Chris, I want to make sure that I'm really clear on this. You don't have to mention COVID. You don't have to mention pandemic in your messages. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look at some of the big messages that are out there right now from the brands, they don't really mention the COVID pandemic. They mention our relationship. They mention... Yes the trust they mention the connectedness they mention like even lowe's i saw this beautiful ad from lowe's lowe's home improvement center has got this ad running right now that is showing people dancing with their kids while they're on a phone call uh, of kids making forts in the backyard oh my god forts in the backyard we haven't done that since the 70s <laughs> but guess what it's, it's like, this is a reset. And, and if you don't acknowledge that with your messaging, you really feel out of touch. Boy, that is and so true. Yeah. We, we keep talking about that same thing in here in this group a lot because we, we've all been taught and pre-programmed that you, you hack someone else's funnel, you build, you build the middle part of that, you just throw a bunch of traffic in it, you work the algorithm. But if the algorithm, if the automation, if the ad set, if the copy is not built on a chassis of human relationship. Like if you didn't discover how the human relationship worked first to interact with you and buy your product, then the copy, the automation, whatever you're gonna build is gonna be wrong because it has to exactly replicate the human heart, right? That's, that's what's going on there. Uh, by the way, Brenda says, yes, find their pain and give them the solution. Um, DJ, great to have you here. Brock, great to have you here. Um, Brenda, great to have you here. CN, awesome. And um, Alex, thanks, man. So glad you're here. Tom, great to see you. Andrea, great to see you. Sheridan, awesome to see you again as always. Um, Dennis, you're the best. So glad y'all are all here. And, and again, 
Ken here. Ken's worked, if you're jumping in late, Ken's worked with brands that we all know and recognize, like all the major sports, like NFL, NBA, Indiana 500, Indianapolis 500. We actually tried to watch that recently and it's not on. Um, M&M's. <laughs> Gary, you, by the way, you can watch a replay. You can watch a replay of the Indianapolis 500, and you'll replay, see the same they, thing. They also had the pro drivers on video game consoles racing yes. each other. And that was the so esports is fun. it's it's awesome watching the NBA do that right now. This is a great pivot, right? How yeah. do you pivot? I, I love watching them play esports, and I'm not like into the NBA, but I think it's so cool because now you're getting a peek behind the curtain of mm-hmm. the players' lives. Yeah. And you're going, wow, they're just like us because they are. And that's are. the relationship you're talking about. It's, it's Absolutely. watching based on a human connection. We're not watching something Correct. automated. Yeah. Correct. Mm-hmm. By the way, um, I, I have to share this with you because I, I know the, uh, the other day when we, uh, you and I had a chat prior to this and, and you had seen the shirt that I was wearing that day. And, I, and it was a zombie shirt and it said, eat locals. And the zombie was sneaking up on a couple having a park you know, lunch. <laughs> And, uh, and I told now you that. Now stand up so we can see your, I want to see your, your so, so, okay, so okay. I told you about this shirt. This is my, this is the Subway inspired zombie eat flesh. Zombie eat flesh. Uh, in, <laughs> instead of Subway eat fresh. But I wore it just for you. And because you. we had talked about this shirt and uh, yeah, I have a whole bunch of zombie themed shirts and some of them are, are really it. funny. I love it. I was telling, I was telling everybody in this group, people know Lucy, my administrator. And I was telling Lucy earlier, I can't wait to talk to Ken today because I can't wait to see what shirt he's got on because he always has the coolest zombie shirts. Um, yeah, back to, back zombies. to what you were saying, Ken. CN just said um, you shouldn't use the words like the pandemic and all that kind of stuff um, because Facebook will hold it and not run it. That's another great thing. Facebook is actually, you know, shutting some of that stuff down. And thankfully so. They're keeping the right. panic on, right? Absolutely. I'll also say this. There is a contextual use of the word pandemic. Like, so if you're, so we're working with a client right now that, okay, and now this is talking about a pivot and I can't mention their name. We have NDAs with them. And, but I can tell you what they're doing. So this is a fashion brand, high-end fashion brand. Mm-hmm. Um, when I say high-end fashion brand, this is like, you would spend six thousand dollars to have them make a custom garment for you right a suit uh, okay so high end yeah they've pivoted and because all of the mills in italy are shut down for fabric but they have all this fabric of like great stuff they've pivoted and started creating fashionable face masks that's very cool and so we're helping them launch an entire new vertical next week Based on, because it looks like in this phased rollout of people getting back to norm, whatever normal is, right, that, that in some cities, based on densities, their face masks are going to be a requirement. Yeah. Well, why, why would you want to be fashionably ugly when you can be, you know, yeah. I you know, love put that. your best face forward? So, so, again, pivoting, but not feeling out of touch. So your messaging has to resonate with your audience. And that's what I mean. And, and I can help, like if you're, if you're stuck, for, and I'll say this for your group, if anybody's stuck with how to pivot a message, just message me. I'm, I'm happy to jump in and just give you some guidance and advice. Yes, what I do for a living is we write copy, but I'm, I'm not, this is not my, my, I'm not here to sell you. I wanna help. And if I can help bring value and help you get that message shifted so that you do feel relevant and you still continue to sell like here's here's the bottom line right now if you looked at our facebook ads manager you would go wow what is wrong with these people we only have one conversion based ad right now and it's at our it's yeah it's only our bottom of funnel and our bottom of funnel are conversion based ads and everything else is traffic ppe Mm -hmm. i almost said ppp which is personal protective stuff PPE um, and 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 we're doing video views. Why? I can get people and target people. You guys all know this that are ideal clients for us with mm-hmm. messages that feel good, mm-hmm. and then they'll see another message that feels good and clever and fun. And guess what I'm doing? I'm using the same methodology I use in a traditional sales funnel to move them through the process, mm-hmm. but it feels good. And then they want to do business with us, right? Mm-hmm. We've seen a spike in sales the last several days of like, I think we're at 13, 14% now increase. Um, wow. And why is that? Because our messages resonate with the people who are seeing them. And See, that's, that's brilliant. That's yeah. brilliant. So right there. Do so that. People are saying they're experiencing a loss 
And we're experiencing an increase as well in our agency because we've pivoted and several others that I know, lots of others in this group have, but, but it's that pivot. You, you have to make that shift and you have to go back to the human heart connection. What's up, Franklin? Yeah. Glad you're here, by the way. Good to see you. Yeah, I'm glad yes. you're there too, Franklin, even though I can't see you. <laughs> yeah, Ken doesn't have the Facebook view. He's just staring at Zoom like we all have for the past. I'm, I'm looking deeply into your eyes, Chris. <laughs> by the way, this is, this is the most stable internet connection I have had in weeks. Because you My left office, your house and went back to your yes, office? <laughs> my office was so dusty when I got here this morning. I'm like, what happened? But it's, it's, it was like a ghost town in here. Look, I mean, he's yeah. dried up. <laughs> Okay, so um, right here, Ken, um, CN says, what's your Facebook page called? I want to follow you. So give us, uh, drop us some links here. What's your, I can okay. handle it. I'll give you two of them. So if you want to follow the company, the brand, it's uh, Ad Zombies, A-D-Z-O-M-B-I-E-S. Um, and you can find Ad Zombies on all social channels. It's the same way, at Ad Zombies. If you want to follow me, it's at Spanky Moskowitz, S-P-A-N-K-Y-M-O-S-K-O-W-I-T-Z. And so you can follow me uh, and stalk me. And if you, by the way, if you wind up going to our website at any point, yeah. you'll be retargeted like a machine and you'll see some of those messages. And I'm not saying that because I'm trying to draw you in. I want you to see it. Hey, wait, wait, don't even go to my website. You know what to do, marketers. Go to Facebook, look at my ads and you'll see what's active right now. You'll, you'll get works, it. Yeah. yeah. Right? All right. So and, let me make sure I get this right. At A-D-Z-O-M-B-I-E-S. Correct. And at S P A N K Y M O S K O W I T Z. Yup, you got it. Boom, just sent it. Okay, there you go, folks. Um, CN says, thank you, Spanky. Uh, Franklin, nice to see you, Chris. Uh, you too, Ken. Good to see you in here. Franklin, Franklin loves it when we look deeply into the camera. So that, that real human connection, that's what we're talking about right there. Uh, that's right. It's human connection. Now, I I'll tell you, it's. It's interesting to me. I love doing video chats with adults, but yet when I'm in my house and my daughter calls me on FaceTime from her yeah. bedroom, I'm yeah. like, why can't you just make a phone call? Like I don't, there's a disconnect for me between doing this and my daughter calling me from the bedroom on FaceTime. And I don't know that's what true. that is. It, yeah. it, well, she's it's right the, there. She should walk around the corner. <laughs> or come upstairs. Like I'm right here. Come on. That's great. All right, so um, before we, we, we got a few minutes, so anybody with questions, be sure and rack them up in here. I'll read them off as they come in. If you have questions on copy, on messaging, on making the pivot, on anything Ken's doing that's working. Again, he's getting high conversion rates right now because of the pivots. Obviously, he's worked with an insane amount of really cool brands. So you got an expert on the line right now. Hit him up while you can. Um, so one question, Ken, that I think is really relevant is as we're – as we're rebranding and repurposing, look, funnels, web pages, ads, all that kind of stuff, at what point, how do we know when to change back? Is it something we just feel or is it like after the president says everybody can go back to the park or how do we know? Okay. I don't know about most people in the world of marketing or most individuals that run their own businesses, but I think most entrepreneurs inherently know, have gut instinct. I have never done anything that my gut didn't tell me to do and my gut tells me when things are the when it's the right time to do things yeah and okay. so i would say don't use a don't have the president saying hey it's okay be the barometer because it may not feel okay yet right there may be some mm -hmm. hesitancy and depending on where you market right i we cut off all of our ads to italy and um and in in that surrounding part of europe pretty quickly because okay. we saw what was going on and it would feel really icky, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And, and we, haven't, we haven't fired up our ads yet in Italy. However, our ads started running again in Amsterdam because, mm -hmm. and again, so, so use your instinct, that makes use sense. your gut. And, and while you can glance at the data, don't let the data drive every single decision. Yeah. Use your gut because your gut will never steer you wrong the data can paint a picture that's not always super accurate. Because your gut's that human connection again. It's keep coming back to that, yeah. All right, CN says ideas for realtors. So CN works for realtors. She does creative work, advertising, marketing, coaching, consulting, that kind of thing for realtors. CN, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's correct though. Um, so how about realtors? Some of them, it's, it's a tough market to be a realtor. How do you help a realtor sure. get in front of people and sell houses right now? So, so what I would do is if I'm a realtor and I want to do like, let's say we had 
let's go traditional. Let's say we had an open house planned, right? And a lot of realtors do open houses. They're still a thing. I would have that realtor go to this house, make sure there's nobody in it, right? It's furnished, whatever. Mm -hmm. Have that realtor do a Facebook live open house and have them stream it mm -hmm. and multi multicast it if they have the ability to multi multicast using tools like StreamYard, which we haven't talked about yet. Um, yeah. Multicast on a bunch of channels because what happens is, is you've got to think about the lifespan of video. When you put the video out there, even after that house is gone, right? And you can put sold, you can update the message later. If you think about that, that video now creates energy on the internet for you. You might have 10 people watch it the first time. First time I did a live cast, I'm like, who the hell is watching this, right? But what happens is over time you go, wow, this video reached a thousand people on this channel, 1800 people on this channel, 5,000 on this one, whoa, what's going on? It's because over time, it's like compound interest. It accumulates views, it accumulates energy. And it's like a snowball rolling downhill. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger mm -hmm. as it picks up more viewers. So I would do a virtual open house where the realtor is going through the house and showing every feature. And you might wanna have them just walk through it in their mind, but yeah. do the open house, say, hey, I know we can't get out here to the open house, but I wanted to show you this great property. Uh, and right, and now you walk them through. So that's one way I would do it. Good Another idea. thing I would do is I would talk to people who are right now struggling with, they have to move for whatever reason and need to sell their house. And they don't wanna let people in their house or it feels uncomfortable for them, or maybe there's some situation. I would talk to them directly and say, hey, we understand this and we're gonna take all the precautions to make sure your family is safe. And here's what we do every time we show a house. Mm -hmm. And right, we're gonna do this, this, and this. We're gonna make sure that people don't touch your cabinets. We're gonna, so you can really speak to the what's going on and talk to them at, like a human. Don't talk to them like a realtor, mm -hmm. right? Because you're a human first, realtor second. Mm, and great. um and then i i had a conversation on my um on my i don't know if it's up on the podcast yet it might be up on the podcast but i know it's for sure on on my youtube channel i uh andy from the district phx he's a real estate guy here in phoenix uh and go check that out on youtube so you can just go to my youtube channel and look for uh look for uh real estate um I forgot how it's titled, but find it. it my YouTube channels, you'll see it. It's going to be one of the top videos. It was recent. Okay. Cool. Um, and I think that might help you with some ideas as well. Excellent. Thank you. Great, great answer. And then how about car dealerships? People work with car dealerships. So car dealerships are a little weird for me. And here's why. I think Carvana is the only one that was able to quickly pivot because they were already doing it. That and Tesla who does home delivery. Yeah. I think car dealers need to talk about, there's a couple of things. There's a group of people in this country, in this world, that go, why are car dealers necessary right now? Why do they need to be open? And the answer is, it's not about selling the vehicles, it's about servicing vehicles, because people who need to get to work, if their car breaks, they need them service, right? So there's that mental disconnect. Yeah. So you have to be able to address, if, if you're selling cars, you don't need to address why we're selling cars. You need to address that we're also here for you for the service because right now we all need solid vehicles. Right now we all need to, our transportation to be good because you never know, right? Yeah. So for the car dealers, I would offer, I would have my messages wrapped around if you're shopping, shop from the comfort of your home with contactless delivery. I, I've said to our clients, we invented contactless delivery before contact, contactless delivery was a thing. Our clients buy from us. They never touch anything but an email. So if their computer keyboard's dirty, they're getting dirty from themselves, not from us. Mm -hmm. But I would make it all about contactless delivery because that seems to be the thing that people are most concerned about. Not everybody, okay? They're, but don't get political. Don't, don't shame people or make them feel wrong for feeling a certain way mm -hmm. or not feeling a certain way. It's the same reason I tell business owners never get political online because mm -hmm. when you do that, you divide your audience in half. And do you really so want to true. piss off half of your potential customer base? So true. Yeah, I love that. And right now in the, in the creative and digital marketing space, we as creatives who already understand digital have an opportunity to build. And even if the car dealerships think, hey, this is all going to get back to normal. People are going to shop for cars again. Yes, that's so true. But there's also a, a, a chance 
real that this next fall or winter, we might have to be in a little more lockdown again. Like this thing has waves to it, aftershocks, so to speak. So it's a sure. great time to sell your clients on, hey, even if we know it's getting back to normal, we got a new normal now. We got to be ready for an aftershock. We got like, let's go ahead and get you prepared. This is the time. Like, let's go, you know? Right. So. And car, car dealers are unique in that they have the ability to deliver their, their product right to your front door. Yeah. And, and I would make sure that if, you're, if car dealers are delivering cars that way right now, I would make sure that every stinking car you deliver has a big ribbon across it. It looks like a Christmas package with a bow on top and you make a big deal and there should be someone filming the delivery on their phone. And you know the owner, the, 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 the delivery person has gloves, they hand the keys and the paperwork to the buyer, right? And you show that, right? You, you just film that. All you need is your smartphone. Great and experience. then you, yeah. you put that on the internet and people are going to go, wow, Joe Bob car dealer, whatever. I just, I don't know why Joe Bob came out of my mouth. Um, but, you know, they, wow, look at this. They care. But you're creating that experience. You're creating that, that connection, remember? It's all yes. about connection. Yes. Awesome. Great answer. Tell me about, okay, what's the software again? We, I, I, I've taken up 30 minutes of your time. I so appreciate it. StreamYard. I, I was introduced StreamYard. to StreamYard. Okay. And um, at first when I saw StreamYard, I'm like, oh, this has potential. What is it? What's really cool about StreamYard, especially if you're doing lives, like I have my, I, the reason I looked at my watch wasn't because I was in a hurry. Someone messaged me and said, hey, are you going to be ready to do your live in 25 minutes? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Um, the, I, I, do, I go live every morning at, at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Mm -hmm. And so I use StreamYard because it allows me with one click to multicast. So I'm simultaneously multicasting on three different Facebook pages, YouTube, and my Twitter feed using Brilliant. through Periscope. And so it's a one-stop shop. It aggregates all the comments into, into a dashboard so I can see the comments. I can bring guests in live and put them on the screen, split screen with me at the same time. I can bring in a third guest. I can show a screen yeah. share while showing us. It looks, so it's a really powerful tool and it's not, in, not very expensive. Uh, I think I'm, I'm on the premium plan, which is like four, I forgot what I paid for it. it go look at it, StreamYard, yeah, you'll see the pricing. Brilliant, so. yeah, Stream, somebody just said StreamYard is amazing. Love yeah, it, yes. Great tool. Yeah, I, I wanna try it, I don't wanna play. All right, cool, I love that. And there you go. I'll look it up, thank you. You're welcome. Well, Sir, I know you have 20 minutes before your next live. You're in high demand. So thank you again, Ken, for being here. Like, oh my gosh, thank you for being here. The, the value that you're dropping, just hearing your story, hearing your backstory, hearing how you're progressing in your brand. The question Zombies is- Zombie's here too, by stuff. the way. Say what? <laughs> Zombie's on my Hydro Flask too, so. <laughs> You gotta stay you have a problem. I, I think I, I need do. To see I need an intervention. I need an intervention. <laughs> All right. So, uh, by the way, the wedgie brand and the zombie brand. Just last question, then we got here. What? How did those pop in your head? Other than just fun, and you really haven't well, grown up yet. So, so here's what it is. Because I'm 53, going on 12. When I started Wedgie Media. <laughs> the reason it, I started Wedgie. Well, first of all, forget the reason. The, the name. The name came from. Wedgies get stuck. They stick in your butt crack. Genius. Oh right? my gosh. And so I like ideas that get stuck in your head. Yeah, creative get that get stuck. And so um, that's where Wedgie came from. And and it and it was a great, it's a great conversation starter too, because our logo was uh two butt cheeks. It, they, the W was formed like two butt cheeks <laughs> with a thong in the middle. And so it, it was one of those things. Now we, we lost a couple of clients. We had a big bank that didn't want to do business with us because they thought we were risque. That's fine. Um, I don't need every client. I just need the right ones. And I'm not right. going to shift my brand for a client who thinks that my brand is to this. I don't want to work with you if you think that that's cool. Great. Um, and so that's where it came from. And, uh, and the zombie thing, and I'll give you the, the very final brief story on how the zombie thing came to be. Uh, when, when this thing started by accident, as I, as I said earlier, uh, I didn't have a name for it. There wasn't even a business involved. It was just a, an idea. And I, it was a Sunday night and I was watching after my kids went to bed on DVR, The Walking Dead. And I'm texting uh, back and forth with my buddy, Sean, who went on to become our head copywriter. 
and we're texting back and forth what, what this thing should be called. And over the course of 45 minutes um, texting each other, the name Ad Zombies was born. And the original brand positioning was um, uh, bringing uh, Ad Zombies bring ads back to life. And, I love it. But then um, when I was with Tony Robbins uh, a year and a half ago, it was, I realized that my messaging was off and that's when we pivoted. Again, there's that word, pivot. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, we write words that sell anything. Makes so much sense. Makes so much sense. Well done and a fantastic Thank example. Thank you for leading the way. Thank you. Ken Spanky, thanks for the office tour. Thanks for the time. Thanks for the advice. Thanks for just investing in other people at a time when we need it so much to get our heads back in the game. Dude, you're a rock star. Can't thank you enough for being here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.